Welcome everybody to the Jake Fletcher Show podcast. I'm so excited to be bringing you guys this episode today. I'm here with Mario Cabrera, fellow real estate agent with Remax Advanced Realty here with me. And this is our first episode that is being released with a guest. So on this podcast, every other episode is either me by myself or then the next episode will be with a guest interviewing fantastic winners of all different types and different industries all across the board. So super excited to bring Mario in. How are you doing today? Great, Jake. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Here. Absolutely. My yeah. pleasure. Thanks for being here. Yeah. And uh, you kind of have a, a kind of a special role in my uh, history as a real estate agent because when I first was interviewing brokerages, figuring out who I wanted to bring my business to, right. I looked up Remax right? And I interviewed eight different brokerages. I, I looked up Remax and there was a bunch of Remaxes because individual agents have their Google map, you know, pin in different places. So I just picked one and it happened to be your number, yeah. right? So I, I call, I say, Looking hey, in. you know, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I call, I say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I want to interview the broker. And uh, you said, well, you know, I'm not a broker, but, uh, well, you know, I, I am a broker, but I'm not the broker, not the broker. He's well, I'm a broker associate, yeah. but you know, I can put you in touch with the broker. Right. And I was like, okay, yeah, sounds good. And yeah. you're like, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. So we kind of started talking about real estate a little bit, kind of uh, told you who I am, what I'm about, what I'm right. doing. And you were like, all right, cool. You know, let me, let me talk to Anthony, who's our broker and, and, you know, he'll get back to you. Yeah. A couple days went by. I interviewed a bunch of other brokerages. In the meantime, Remax was actually the last brokerage that I went to go interview. And I almost didn't go, which is another story. It, basically I had, uh, already kind of made up my mind on another brokerage and I had something come up that day where I was like, ah, should I go make some money or go to this interview when I know I'm probably not going to join? Right. So I went to the interview anyways, cause I'm a man of my word. Right. And I walked out of the interview with Anthony knowing in my gut, my heart, my soul, you know, my mind that that was the place I needed to be. Right. Right. So without you having made that connection, I wouldn't probably have been at Remax at all, you know, right. if, if you had been, you know, if you had dropped the ball or not, you know, whatever right. could have happened, you know, it's life, yeah. uh, then I wouldn't be here, you know, and, and at I wouldn't Remax, be here so. with you, so I mean, we exactly. doing this, this podcast, podcast yeah. wouldn't be happening, so <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> shout out, so shout out. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, you, how long have you been in real estate for? Well, I started in 1998, I was uh, previously uh, an insurance agent. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I always wanted to, you know, uh, get my real estate license mm -hmm. since I read The Art of the Deal okay. by Donald Trump. And, you know, I, I always had that in my mind to become a real estate broker mm -hmm. and do things in real estate. And uh, but I was an insurance agent. So and uh, when um, when the, the insurance agent, uh, the insurance uh, industry changed, mm -hmm. you know, I jumped into real estate mm -hmm. and I've never looked back. So. That was in 1998? 1998, April wow. 27, 1998. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So what was the market like back then? How was it different compared to what it is now? Other than, of course, average sale price has probably increased a lot. <laughs> the market was familiar to the 2008 market, in which the market was low. We were in a, in a, in a, in a type of recession. The interest rates were high. Mm -hmm. You know, properties were, were very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. You know, but in... And, and, and the financing was a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but but, you know, it. That's how the market was. Like, okay. Yeah. So when you first got into real estate, did you find it more or less challenging or or easier, or what was your experience in terms of how difficult it was to start seeing success from your, you know, the fruits of your efforts? Well, it was it was it wasn't difficult, but it was it was challenging from the point where. I really didn't know the business, mm -hmm. right? I didn't really know the logistics of the business, you know. So, you start off, uh, you know, wasting your time, you know, not wasting your time because you're learning as you go, right? But you know, dealing with buyers and you know that that are not you're not answering them, you're not asking them the right questions, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it was it was pretty uh, difficult to start, but you know I persevered. Mm -hmm. Very consistent. I kept on doing what my mentor, you know, told me to do. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, persevere and keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. And, you know, law, law of average of numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, the more calls you do, the more chances you get to getting that deal. And I kept doing it. And always with, with the mindset 
of helping that person that I'm with. That that's what kept me in the business, mm. uh, and 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 made me uh, excel. Helping mm. that person that I'm gonna be dealing with, to 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 do the the best I can for them, so their transaction will be as smooth and as as satisfying as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely, that resonates a lot with me mm -hmm. because, you know, first and foremost, you always want to, uh, in two senses, you want to put the customer first mm -hmm. because you want them to feel like, you know, you believe that they're important and what's important to them is important to you as well. Right. But also because you're going to give them a better experience if you're putting them first, you right. know, if you're really considering them, you know, considering their needs and what they want, et cetera, right. you're going to give them a better experience than you're just in it for yourself, you know, so right. I, I right. definitely 100% agree with that. And right. I think we could probably deal, you know, stand to have a, a little bit more of that in the industry, you know, as far as from the, agents' perspective. Definitely, definitely. At the end of the day, it's, it's about the client. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's good that we know what you know what we're doing that we could help that person you know mm -hmm. uh, but it's uh, but finally it's always about them you know and, mm -hmm. and and if 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 you're helping them you know whatever it may be you know at the end of the day if you help them you know your reward is mm -hmm. you know your income yeah you know it's not your income first and then you know the client second it's the client first i don't I, i've never looked at a deal Okay, I've never looked at a deal for the money. I've looked at it for the deal. Mm -hmm. Whether it be a $500 commission or a $50,000 commission, mm -hmm. it's about the deal, it's, a, it's about the customer. Mm -hmm. And for, 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 for everybody to win, win. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you never know that five hundred dollar commission might be, you know, a fifty thousand dollar commission down well, the road. I do, you I know, do know or, because yeah. I've lived it. I've yeah, had, I've had exactly. somebody that was a rental that somebody who did not want to help him, mm -hmm. but that rent that renter, you know, worked for a big firm as an employee, mm -hmm. which I later did, you know, you know, two three million dollars in volume. Yeah. Thanks to that. Another kind of cool thing about that whole like customer first mentality, you know. When I'm prospecting, like whether I'm door knocking or calling people or, or even calling my sphere, you know, pe sphere of influence, you know, people who know me, right. I have in, the, in my mind, I, right. you know, fully am, am convicted and believe to my depths of my heart that, you know, I'm the best person to help them out, right? I don't, I don't want them to get stuck with an amateur who's going to, you know, screw them over or put them in a position where they're compromised, right? right. I want to make sure I get to them first to make sure they get the best help. Of course. You know, and when you have that type of mentality, that comes out to the client as well, I feel like, because not only are you showing them that they're, you know, what their importance is to you, that you they have a high importance, but you're also showing them your innate confidence of right. like, I know what I'm doing, dude. Like, you know, don't get stuck with any of these, sure you know, <laughs> jackasses. I think Siri is talking to us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that's a, a really good point to bring up. I'm curious because you're... You're a team leader, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you lead a, a successful real estate team. Your son is in real estate now. And you've been in real estate for, you know, 20, over, yeah. over 20 years 20, now, yeah, 22 20, years, yeah. right? Right. So what would you say are some of like the main key points of, of starting a successful team? Like, how do you go about that? Because I feel like a lot of agents, you know, once they start to get success, the next question is, all right, well, how do I scale this up, right? How do I take this to the next level? I'm kind of at that point right now, which is partly, you know, partly a selfish question. Right. You know, what, what are some of, what's your advice on like, where do you start? How do you know wh who to add first, <coughs> right? Do you add a transaction coordinator first? Do you add a, a buyer's agent? You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, when it comes to the team, the truth is I don't have that structure as a, as a transaction coordinator. We all, you know, work uh, toward getting that deal done and getting the best deal for that customer done, okay? So it's mm. more, more in, uh, persistence, perseverance, you know. Um, it's all about, you know, you know, helping that person sell the house or buy the house. Mm. When it comes to the team... You know, um, it, you know. At the end of the day, it's it's about prospecting, mm -hmm. okay. And everybody needs to be proud because without the customer, the business doesn't start. Yeah. Okay. And like I told you, I don't have a you know a system set up mm -hmm. per se, you know. And but the customer is always first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we try to do, and that's what we concentrate on. So, okay. So I have we have a buyer's you know I have a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. I I I just list 
properties. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do deal with some buyers every once in a while, mm -hmm. like today. I gotta mm -hmm. go show to two properties, to mm -hmm. two buyers. But uh, as a, a coordinator, I mean, either I, I coordinate it, my son coordinates it, you mm -hmm. know, and we, and, we, and we work the deals together. Mm -hmm. you know. I find that interesting too, because when you talk to people who have been in the industry for a while, you know, and, and that do have teams, often no two teams are alike you right. know i feel like no, it's it's kind of not. a very personal thing so maybe one could say I, that when it's time to scale it'll be obvious how to do it would you say well, you know what the thing is i micromanage mm -hmm. and and i and i understand i micromanage in a good way or a bad in way? a good way <laughs> yeah. because i want everything to be right right yeah so sometimes you know um, my son, you know, comes and he says, look, you got to stop micromanaging. But the thing is that as a, as a seasoned agent, mm -hmm. I see these, I see the problems in the, in the, in the transactions mm -hmm. before they happen. Like I prepare for them, you know, when I'm preparing the transaction. <clears throat> so most of the time, you know, um, I micromanage because I want it to be right because mm -hmm. I know what, what's going to happen. You're anticipating any anticipating downfalls it. that could so occur. So sometimes I micromanage it, and that's why we don't have a transaction coordinator mm. because we do it together, me and my son. Right. Even though mm. my son's done his own transactions, mm -hmm. you know, with no help from me, and they've come out perfect, mm -hmm. but it's just that i got to get out of that micromanaging. Yeah. And, yes, you, you need a transaction coordinator, and you do need a, you know, a, a team, you know, someone for marketing and, and everything, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, a formal team i guess I mean, yeah it's working for me yeah well you know? that's all that matters if it's working for you then it it's for working me. for you yeah i'm yeah. not saying that i won't have a you know transaction coordinator in the future yeah but you know for now it's going good and i've never had you know in 22 years no complaint no problems mm. nothing with a dppr i've been you know you know everybody's happy yeah, that's awesome. And that's, that's, that's what you want. That's what you want. That's what you want. <laughs> yeah. you want. That's so, so we had a panel uh, several months back at the office that was uh, revolving around negotiations. Right. Uh, it was you, Anthony Askowitz, our broker, and then another agent. Right. Um, you came off to me in that panel as a wizard of negotiations, right? And... I don't say that to, to like fluff your ego or anything like that. I'm, I'm go, what I'm going towards Thanks. is, is, you know, there's a, there's a skill to a negotiation, but there's also an art to it. Right. Right. Before you even get to the skill or the art, you need to know your shit. Right. right. Like yeah. if you don't know your shit, you're dead in the water. Right. You're done. Right. Don't, don't even hope to negotiate. Right. right? Because you're going to get circles run around, around you. Right. Right. But once you have that skill set, once you have that foundation, right, right. then you move into applying those skills and I feel once you get the experience of applying the skills you start to become the the artist right, right. the negotiations artist comes back. so to speak yeah. yeah and for some people it does come naturally more naturally than others you know um, so I'm curious what if you had to let me rephrase it this way do you have kind of like a overarching like philosophy on negotiations yeah. tell us about that I do I listen I, I, I speak very little and I listen mm. I listen to all parties in the negotiation and see what their needs and what their what their buttons are. Mm -hmm. Okay, to get everybody what they want and what they need, mm -hmm. you know. So I mean, um, and basically, you need to listen because they will tell you, you know, what what what's the next step to take. And a negotiation, you really, you really need to see the ending of the negotiation before you start it. Yeah. And let me—I uh, don't know how to explain that. Um, like visualizing what visualize, you want. Visualize what's going to happen, what you want to happen, mm -hmm. and then visualize and see how you could take that to where you, where to the end to fruition to mm -hmm. you know, to make it fr you know uh, give fruit and, and be able to close the deal and everybody to be happy. Yeah. But you, you could see it from the beginning. So when I when I do an, when, for example, if I'm going to put an offer on a property, right? I basically look at everything on the property. I mean, look at who the agent is. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the, the same, when, they're gonna, when they present an offer to me on one of my listings, mm -hmm. I look at the agent, I see the contract, how it's written, I see the, the, oh, the buyers. I, you know, I try to get as much information I can. Mm -hmm. I absorb all that information, and then, then instinct takes, kicks in, and mm -hmm. then I analyze, mm -hmm. and then I start by there. Hmm. 
I don't know how to ex- explain. Uh, do you no, I think yeah, I think you did a good job of explaining it. I mean, yeah. and and how do you explain art, really? You know, art. Yeah, right. I mean, co- you know? I mean, cooking. Like I, yeah. I love to cook. Yeah. And Take cooking. a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you and know, then boom. You give me a couple ingredients, and I'll prepare something, and it's yeah. an art because I like to do it, and yeah. and, and I've done it, you know, since I was a kid. So. That's interesting. The how you just said that you like to do it, right? Uh, it's an art because you like to do I it. I love to do it. How can you really? create art if you don't even want to be doing it right i have no interest in like synchronized swimming right so i'd probably right. be a, a terrible <laughs> synchronized swimmer you know right. but if it's something that you're good at and something that you like then you have the opportunity to take it further to that next level right. to that right. artful level right. so that's interesting how many times have you jake helped somebody in the in, in the business mm-hmm. i mean someone um you've helped a client a buyer a seller mm-hmm. And you feel that satisfaction, mm-hmm. even though maybe you didn't make any money, mm-hmm. but you helped them and you steered them in the right way. Yeah. Okay. If you steer somebody in the right way, even if you're not going to make commission, but that's the right thing for them. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know, with an old person that wants to sell a property and buy something, you mm-hmm. know, and and they're telling them to do a reverse mortgage, mm-hmm. and maybe the reverse mortgage is the right thing for them, depending on how do you, how do you say, well, okay, yeah, you should do the reverse mortgage and step back and not make any money off it and just mm. keep it as a, if that is something that is satisfying to you then you're in the right business if you if you if you're not in this business to help people mm-hmm. you know and to get have their best interests at heart you should get out of it mm-hmm. you should get out of it because people could see right through you yeah 100 percent. people can even little kids can smell fakes you know yeah, when you're you not know? authentic you know and you know even animals can pick up on yeah. that i mean you have, i'm sure if you're not authentic you're not you can make a lot of money but mm. at the end of the day it's, is it is it uh is it satisfying to yeah. me? My business is satisfying. Or are you giving the customer the best possible experience? Are they really ending up at the end of the you know the transaction in the absolute best possible way that they could have if you weren't authentic throughout exactly. the process? Yep. So yeah, I feel you on that 100. percent You know, going back to what we were talking before, a lot of, a lot of times, a lot of times, uh, you know, you say the cost, you know, in other businesses, say the customer's always right. Mm-hmm. Well. In real estate, the customer is not always right, mm-hmm. but the customer is first. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes what the customer wants, like what they want, is not the same as what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when they want to get to an, to an end, it takes a certain means to get there. And it's your job. Mm-hmm. That's why I see sometimes, you know, I see, um, you know, agents and, 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 and the customer tells them what they want, how to mm-hmm. price it, what the commission, what this, what that. Well, it, What's the agent there for then? Yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> you're just a lap dog. Well, yeah, you're just yeah. a lap dog. Exactly. You're like, just taking orders. You're not necessarily doing what's best for them. Exactly. You're just doing what they want you to do. And What's the first question you get when you go to a listing presentation? Uh, usually, it's going to be, what, how much is my house worth? Or, you know, what, what, is, you know, okay. what are we going to put one? on the market for? Uh, will you reduce your commission? There you go. Yeah. Right. And, you, and you know what happens? Most agents, the first thing they do is, yes, they yeah. will. Please just but hire me. But that's the first question. They, that's the first <laughs> yeah. question that a, a seller makes. Mm-hmm. Okay, why? Because they don't understand that there's a lot more intricate mm-hmm. logistics to a to a real estate deal. Yeah. And now we're going into the real estate deal that we we're going to talk about. Yeah. And um, it takes an experienced agent, okay, to to see every single step of that deal. Yeah. To make it and take it to closing. And and. I feel like the most common misconception with sellers there is that they think that by reducing the agent's commission, they're going to make more money on the bottom line, right? Right. Which is maybe could be potentially true, but in reality, an agent who's going to reduce their commission, they're already not very good at negotiating. <laughs> so how well do you think how well do you think they're going to negotiate on your behalf? Right. Right. I always tell people, look, an agent that's going to reduce their commission, they just want the paycheck. When the other agent calls them, the buyer agent calls them and asks them, you know, what's the bottom line? They're going to spill all the beans because right. they just want to get the job done. And, and, right? and we love those agents. Right. Because they, they make it easier they for us easier to for us step in and, step and, in and wow get... our customers. And, exactly. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. You know, how many, how many times, uh, you know, I've had um, a customer of mine that maybe uh, chose a cousin of his or because his sister became a realtor. They use them, and at the end of the day, they could have netted thirty thousand dollars more. Yep, it's. I always tell sellers too. It's not 
the the uh, the price that matters the most. It's right. actually the terms. The terms. Right. A lot of people, all they think about bottom line, bottom line, price, price, price. But the terms can matter so much more. I mean, the terms can ruin the deal or not. You yeah, know. Definitely. So you need an agent that knows, that has the experience, and has the knowledge and the skill set to be able to navigate that and know when you're getting an offer from a buyer's agent. Well, you know what terms need to be, you know, str uh, crossed out, you know, and, right. and the counter offer, and what things need to be added or tweaked, and so yeah. So yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit for a second about the uh, some of the common buyer or seller misconceptions when right. using a, a realtor because it's not a secret, you know, real, realtors have a bad, you know, reputation in some uh, <laughs> people's minds, right? Almost. And and I feel like. A lot of that is because there are a lot of amateur agents out there, but a lot of it too, maybe 50-50, I don't know, I couldn't put a stat to it, but a lot of it also is the misunderstanding from the point of view of the public of what we actually do. Right. 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 So what are your thoughts on that? What, what kind of things jump out immediately about Well, they, about they, should, they should be asking their, you know, in an agent interview, they should be asking the commission is the last thing they should ask about mm -hmm. and it shouldn't even make a difference because if the commission is 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 relevant to how much you sell the property for mm -hmm. okay and i'll give you an example um about two years ago i went to a listing appointment mm -hmm. right and there was about five agents that had gone before or whatever and you know everybody you know he goes the first question was i want to ask you before we even start will you charge me four percent commission mm -hmm. I says, well, the other agents, I mean, why are you asking me this question? We should be asking other questions. I mean, what have you seen what my stats are? Have you seen how many deals I've closed? How, how long I've been in the business? What I know about this business? What I know about, about financing? What I know about appraisals? What I know about uh, inspections? Mm -hmm. okay. That's going to save you more than that little 2%. That's going to save you a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah. goes, look, I go, let me, I go, I go did the other agent, uh, uh, yeah, he says yes. Mm -hmm. Even one would do it for three percent. I go oh, great. I go and 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 he offered it to you, right? Yeah. And he's like, no, he didn't offer it to me. No, I I I I asked him and I made him give me. A, he says that he will give me three percent. I go well, just like what you said. Mm -hmm. If he negotiated his money so quickly, how fast do you think he's gonna go negotiate yours? Yep. Okay. At the end of the day, it's not the commission you're gonna pay. Mm -hmm. It's how much you're gonna get paid. How you gonna get for your for your house? What's your net? What's your net? Yeah. What's, what's your bottom line? Yep. Okay. At the end of the day, realtors make the prices mm -hmm. because everything that's sold, eighty percent of properties or more that are sold are sold by a real estate agent mm -hmm. with his commission in it. Mm -hmm. You know. So an appraisal take that into consideration, anyways. Yeah. All right, so back to the question, because I think I, I steered off. Talking about just common misconceptions from the public about realtors <laughs> right. and, and how those misconceptions are false. Okay, right, yeah, that, that it just takes, you know, put it, to put it on Zillow, and that's it. Well, they're going to mm -hmm. get all these buyers coming in. Most of the buyers that are coming to for sale by owners, mm -hmm. okay, they're going to come in trying to get, you know, a deal. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm going to knock off 6% right off the top. Right off the top. <laughs> right off the top. So yeah. basically, you're going to sell your property probably for the same or a lot less, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to do all the work that we do. Okay? I, in most cases, too, I think it's 95% of for sale by owners end up listing with an agent, too. Of course. And that's something a lot of them don't know. You know, like, and, and that other 5%, right. uh, a hefty percentage of that 5%, right. just take it off the market altogether and don't sell. It's, right. it's not that 5%, you know, end up, they sold it by themselves. It's more like 1%. Right. And then 4% of it are just like, yeah, we were just kind of testing the market. Right. You know, our house is worth like 600000 but we want to see if we can get a million for it, right. you know. <laughs> so yeah. That's another misconception, I yeah. think, is a lot of sellers, you know, <clears throat> you have a lot of emotion in your home. Right. You, have, you know, your kids grew up there, your family, et cetera. And, you know, a lot of sellers, I think, mistakenly believe that that adds some kind of intrinsic, you know, monetary value to the right. home. But and the buyer, you know, not to sound crass, but the buyer doesn't care that your kids, you know, right. grow up. <laughs> they don't care about, you know, all the birthdays and like they're buying it for themselves and their family, you know. So right. that's why the, the realtor's job of figuring out that market value that's that's the most important thing. It's not what the seller believes is the value. Right. The buyer buyer is not paying that number. If right. they were, then we our commissions would be a lot bigger right, right, right. <laughs> every time. Yeah. So I wish it were the case, but you yeah, know. Yeah. And going back um, to the what the logistics are of a sale, right? right? When mm. the property gets listed, first of all, you got to mm. prepare the property. Right. Okay. 
then you gotta you know do all the marketing for take the correct pictures mm -hmm. you know the video if you're gonna take video mm -hmm. you know you gotta prepare it you yeah. know and then you gotta take it to market all right you gotta take it to market but then there's once you get a contract okay mm -hmm. let's say you get not a contract once let's say you get five offers okay mm -hmm. first of all you gotta see which is the best offer mm -hmm. okay you gotta you gotta analyze that offer look at the inspection period the, the closing day, closing commitment, additional period. terms are additional always fun. Terms, <laughs> you know, a, yeah. you gotta you gotta look at a, the, the the offers as a whole, not mm. just look at the price and then accept. Okay, so once you get into a contract, mm -hmm. then the first step is the inspections. Okay, one of the good questions to ask your realtor is, do you go to inspections? Mm -hmm. All right, you should go to inspections. Yep, inspections okay? and appraisals. Exactly. Yep. The second one is the appraisal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does your does your uh, realtor go to appraisals? Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, every appraisal is different, and mm -hmm. ev and every appraisal it's it's an opinion of value. Yep. Okay. It's and another art. It's science it, mixed it, with an art. Well, yeah, good. <laughs> some good, yeah. some bad, but yeah. but they, you really need to have a realtor that knows. Mm. Okay. First about the inspection, mm -hmm. and second about appraisal. Why? Why? Because uh, some. You know, sometimes an appraisal can misrepresent or not have the correct information. Mm -hmm. And you, knowing the house, okay, knowing the correct square footage and why they need to use the correct square footage, mm -hmm. what type of prop, what type of property is it, and what condition it's in, mm -hmm. because if it, you you cannot, you cannot appraise a property and use, uh, and not adjust for a property that's completely brand new, and mm -hmm. it's never been lived in. Yeah, I mean, well completely remodeled and it's never been lived in to mm -hmm. one that's completely remodeled and it's been lived in. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot, diff a lot of different factors. Mm -hmm. How do you put a value on how that? Do you, how you do know? you put a value on yeah. that? Well, your realtor should be knowledgeable enough to go to that appraisal, mm -hmm. okay, and speak to the appraisal, okay, and, you know, uh, and come to a meeting of the minds and, and mm -hmm. understand before he leaves that you guys are on the same page. Yeah. And if he's not, you should correct him mm -hmm. because that could affect the purchase. Mm. All right, completely. Because if you're off ten thousand dollars and you guys can't meet, and 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 reduce it, I mean, then you're not, you know, you, the deal's not going to go through. Yeah. Then the other one is unless the, it's a cash deal. Right. Yeah. Okay. The problems you come up with, uh, with, uh, with financing. Mm -hmm. You know, with uh, permits. Mm -hmm. You know, with uh, liens, square footage, yeah. liens. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, title problems. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's so many different factors, and I'm going to send you later. Uh, uh, this uh, thing I wrote one time was on uh, 184 different things you should you should you should uh, consider before putting your property on the market that a realtor could do for you and that you can't do for yourself. Cool. Because there's a lot of things that we do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another thing, you know, ask your you know ask your your realtor when, when someone asks you uh, you know what the what the price or my motivation, what do you say? Well, you mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't say anything. You shouldn't say anything to hinder. Mm -hmm. a price reduction mm -hmm. or to hinder the negotiation. That's why negotiations is so important. So what are you, you would literally just be silent, silent like I'm the buyer's agent. Oh, hey, what's your buyer's motivation? How motivated are they? Well, they're as motivated as uh, let's see the offer that you have. Once you, when I see the offer, I'll tell you how motivated they are. Yeah. My, my response is, well, it's on the market. Yeah. It's on the market, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, well, you think you priced it right? Well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like Hazel said the other day, mm -hmm. he goes, you think I priced something yeah. wrong? That was, that was such she's, a good she's line. Awesome, she, yeah, this was a top yeah. producer in our office. Yeah. She's been in the real estate industry since the Cretaceous period. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no shade. I was six she's years She's awesome, old. yeah. She, was, she said, do you, she was, this is her response to the buyer's agent, do you really think I would waste my time and put it on the market if it wasn't worth $9.50? Right. <laughs> it's such the thing a good is line. That, that a lot of agents are so accustomed to the mm -hmm. guy on the other side saying, yeah, bring mm -hmm. me an offer. They're, they're desperate. They want to move here. They want to move there. Well, you know what? I don't, I don't give that information yeah. because I owe my client a fiduciary. Yeah, which I own, you know. Yeah, yeah. And 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 if if I do say anything like that, then I'm hindering the best price possible for that property. Yeah, exactly. You know, hundred percent. And you're doing nobody a favor except for the other side. Yeah. So yeah. you already messed up your negotiation. The guy on the other side is setting you up. Yep. And you don't know it. Yeah. What about inspections? Why is it important for a realtor to go to the inspections? Because inspe because they will they will go to the inspection, get the inspection done, and then come back to try to get a credit. Mm -hmm. 
okay? And you need to be there. I can, I, I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me. Let's go. About a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that this will shed some light on it. So I was, I was away. Okay, I was away, and I, I, I did not go to that inspection. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was about to get back, but they had to do the inspection. They had to do the inspection. My son went, you know, and, and he went. To make a long story short, they sent me the inspection. They said that the, 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 the sewer lines were collapsed. Cast iron pipes? or Ca Cast iron pipes were collapsed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They sent me the video, everything. I, I, I knew that it, they weren't. Mm -hmm. I knew that they weren't because the way that it looked like it was collapsed. Mm -hmm. I had checked it before. I had ran all the water and it didn't back up or anything. So I go, okay, let's extend the inspection period another seven days. Got another I get inspection? Back. No, yeah, well, yeah. So I, when I get back, I call the sewer inspector, mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the plumber that did the sewer inspection sent the video. Mm -hmm. And I called him and I said, listen, I need you to come do an inspection. House. Oh, so when he showed up, he said, I already did the inspection. I go, I know. That's why I want you to do it again. Run the sewer cam, and I want to see it. Hmm. Well, he got back in his car, and he left. Okay? What they did was, then I, then I had another sewer guy go out. Okay? He actually didn't want it. He was, he was not going to do the sewer. He didn't even do it. He says, I already did it. I'm not going to do it. He got in his car and left. Why? Because he had sent them another video of another property that had a... That, that had a collapsed drain. Wow. So when I sent mine... <laughs> Shady. <laughs> I, paid for my, I paid for it. Yeah. I paid the $350, uh -huh. okay? And the, the, the sewer inspector, because it was, it was an older lady, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't have much money. Mm -hmm. She couldn't pay it. So I paid it, and we, we did the video, ran the video, and I called the realtor. I go, listen, you know, what you just did, you know what you did, you know, so we're going to go, you know, basically we went through the deal. Nothing was paid. They wanted a $5,000 credit for the collapsed... You know, drain. So it costs way more than that to fix it anyway. If, if I would, <laughs> if so I would have been at that inspection yeah. that I wasn't, when he would have found that collapsed drain, mm -hmm. I would have told him, show it to me on the camera. Yeah. And we would have gone through that, that, yeah. that, that problem. Wow. So that's so important to go. Yeah. Just like termites. You know, I've had a, a 2014 home yeah. inspection, and the guy come down and say, look, I found termites. I go, show me where you found the termites. Mm. And there wasn't termites. It was in their pocket. <laughs> Unfortunately, he, he, it was. my dude planted termites on the scene. <laughs> yeah. That's so wild, man. We're in Miami. Yeah, that's. <laughs> it's the wild, wild west. And I can go here. through. I can go through to so many. I got let's do it. So stories, I, I like the anecdotes. So let's let's continue through the steps of the deal. Right. And any anecdotes and and funny stories, crazy stories, just you know, throw them out on the table. So what comes next? What's so we've already we've negotiated a contract, right? We're, we're under contract. Right. The effective date has passed, right, where everybody has signed and agreed that the terms on this sheet of paper, we're all good with this, right? right? So inspections, right, appraisal, what happens next? Well, we're waiting for closing, title to be done, and, and forget to clear the close from the mortgage company so we get close. So what happens in that mortgage process? If, if the buyer needs financing, it's not a cash deal, let's say they're, they're financing FHA, right? right? So um, let's say it's a... $400,000 house, they're financing three, I don't know, three, 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 yeah, three, yeah, something like that, inconsequential. Mm -hmm. But what happens during that process? If you're representing the buyer, right. what, uh, or we can do both sides, buyer or seller, what is your role as a realtor in that process while the buyer is getting that financing? Make sure we get a real clear to close mm -hmm. with no contingency, I mean, with no, 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 no steps left, no, no uh, conditions, an mm -hmm. unconditional commitment. Right before the commitment date is out, before that commitment date expires, mm -hmm. because once you pass that commitment date, you go hard on the contract, and if if you don't, if they don't qualify for the loan and they can't close the loan, they can lose their deposit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, if I'm representing the buyer, I'm gonna make sure all the timelines are in order to protect my client. You mm -hmm. know how many times I've been at a listing and they call me three days after the commitment date? Listen, Mark, we need an extension. Because uh, they have a problem with the uh, financing, this and that. Go look, you're out of your commitment. Mm -hmm. Then you pressure. You, there's pressure for that other agent to get the mortgage broker to get things done quick. Mm -hmm. And then you know, so I mean, you you really need to be on the timelines. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be calling the mortgage brokers. You need to be calling the title company. You need to be doing all that. As a selling agent or the listing agent? As a, as a selling agent. Yeah. As, as, no, as a selling agent, yeah, as a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to be doing all that. Yeah. You know? So 
So, yeah. What about as a listing agent? As a listing agent? As a listing agent, it's the buyer's agent's mm -hmm. responsibility for the timelines. Mm -hmm. I'll, let, I'll let them, you know, ride the different, you know, dates mm -hmm. because some agents won't do what they need to do and mm -hmm. then you have leverage and mm -hmm. that's part of the negotiation. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. And, and, and I'll tell you what, you want to hear another one? Mm -hmm. Lay it on. I had this guy, and if he, ever, if he sees us, he knows who he is, but he presented an offer on a property in um, Palmetto Estates. Mm. By the way, it's one of the, the highest sales in uh, Palmetto Estates. That's nice. for Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, per square footage. But um, this guy presents an offer, mm -hmm. you know, and he presents an offer com conventional, mm -hmm. right? So... When I presents the offer, there was multiple offers on the on the on the on the property. Mm -hmm. So I asked them to send. I send them. You know, I asked for the DU. You know, you don't have to send the DU, but if we have multiple offers, we want to see the DU. We want to see what the real deal, what the real uh, you know uh, mortgage approval is, mm -hmm. right? So when I looked at the, at the debt to income ratios, it 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 didn't look conventional. What's debt to income? Just for people who debt don't debt to income ratio is what your what you make in the year. Uh, compared to your liabilities. So basically... Your car payments. Your car payments and all that. So when I, when I looked at that DTI, I, I, I immediately knew that it, it, could, it couldn't be conventional. Mm -hmm. It had to be FHA. Mm -hmm. But I let it ride mm -hmm. because we already had the... You know, we, were, we took the contract. It was the best contract, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, all over, all, over all terms. And when the appraisal goes, I go to my appraisals. So there was a broken tile. So then I tell the appraiser, hey, listen, is this going to be a problem, this broken tile? And he says, well, it is an FHA appraisal. Mm -hmm. so, the prop, so, the, so the purchase was an FHA purchase, but they represent it as a conventional. On the contract. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that breaches the contract. Yep. Okay? Because on the contract, you have to specify which type you of financing. You have to specify. Yeah. It's okay if you could switch it within your commitment date, mm -hmm. okay? But not within, you know, the commitment was almost done. So I told the guy, okay... So the appraisal comes back, and he says, "You're seven thousand dollars. You know, we're seven thousand. We got a problem. We're seven thousand dollars below." Mm -hmm. You know, I said, "Well, send me the appraisal. Let me talk to my guy." The commitment date was already because we had put a fifteen-day commitment, mm -hmm. okay, which is short, but they were already and they were supposed to be on the gung ho on the yeah. ball and accept this offer. Well, you know what? To make a long story short, they ended up paying seven thousand dollars extra for the for the property. And they were contractually obligated. Contractually to do so. obligated because yeah. they would have lost their deposit. So, what does it mean when you say the appraisal was seven thousand under? What does that mean? It came seven thousand dollars under what the contract price was. So the contract price was like four hundred thousand. The appraisal comes in at three ninety three. Right. Right. So that's basically telling the lender. You know, hey, this house is only worth three hundred ninety-three thousand, right. but your client that's taking money from you is trying to pay four hundred thousand. Right. So that signals to the lender that basically they're giving this person too much money, exactly. right? And and they're not going to have enough money to right. pay for it anyways, right. right? So then they had to end up paying for so the difference. The, so the agent had 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 um, you know blamed his buyer for steering him to do that, and at the end. When we close and I and I'm in front of both of them, it was the agent mm -hmm. that put in the offer conventional, knowing that it was FHA. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought he was doing a favor, but he could have he could have lost that money for his client. And this is a perfect another perfect example of how uh, things that realtors, amateur, you know, real estate people will make a bad rap for the professionals. Of course, I mean, yeah. and you know, I mean, yeah. So, no comment. <laughs> no comment. We'll keep it don't positive, get me, you know. Don't keep, get me started on that. One, we'll we'll don't, keep things don't get, positive. Don't get me started on that. One. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. keep it positive. So, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened in a real estate deal, or in the course of business? And what's the craziest real estate story that you have? The craziest, or a craziest. <laughs> Sometimes extremes, I feel like, are hard to, you know, parse out. But what's what's something that jumps out to you? Some crazy things that have happened. Crazy in what sense? They Just entertaining, you know. We're entertaining, entertaining the good people out there with well, regaling some funny stories or crazy a, things. A divorce that sale. Uh huh. You know, the 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 husband and the ex-wife was there, mm -hmm. and the ex-wife brought her boyfriend. Uh huh. <laughs> I can just good. tell you how that finished. <laughs> you know, it was a fight. Yeah, uh, a literal fist fight. A fist in the yeah in the wow. in the in the. In, other, in yeah, the home. In, in, the, in the in the title company. Oh wow. Yeah yeah. 
Yeah, so that's, that's the craziest that's ever happened to me. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amongst others. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say them on tape. Yeah, yeah. Some of them, yeah. you know, you don't want to, you know, put the, the evidence out there. Yeah. <laughs> it might yeah. incriminate somebody, yeah, 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 incriminate on one part. of your clients. Yeah. Um, so let's say, let, let me ask you another question. What's, what do you see as a likely future here in the next year or two as far as the real estate market nationally and here in Miami Dade? Well, Look, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, talk going around that that Zillow's going to take over the real estate market. That this app, that this thing, you know what? Real estate at the end of the day is still a human business. Mm -hmm. It takes contact. It takes. There's no way a computer, a program, an app mm -hmm. can do what us agents do. So Zillow's what not going to huh? Zillow's not going to go to the inspection for you. And they're not going to go to the inspection. They're not going to go to the appraisal. <laughs> they're not going to, you know, they're not going to be the psychologist yeah. <laughs> when they don't, when the wife doesn't want to close and the husband wants to close. And you know, it's it's. A, you can't even get those people on the phone. No, no you gotta, you <laughs> much less expect exactly. any psychological support unless you're paying yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. You know what I mean? so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, that's um, you know, there there's no even if you had a you know, robot, real estate robot 5000, right. you know, sponsored by Zillow with the best AI in the world. They don't know what we know about the local market. Right. They don't know, you know, and, and plus Zillow is their estimates. I loathe because they're people don't understand they're using an algorithm based off of tax roll, right. based off of square footage and based off of literal just data numbers that right. are accessible. And they have an algorithm that crunches the numbers and comes up with an estimate for the home. Right. They don't know what the house looks like on the inside. Right. They don't know about the micro neighborhood and how that home compares to the 10, 20 homes around it. They don't know how to factor in things like, you know, is it a busy street or, you know, a billion factors that only a human, at least at this point in time, maybe once the singularity happens, I don't know, we'll see. But a human is the only thing that can really determine those kind of micro factors right so what do you think as far as like the health of the the real estate market in nationally and in miami Dade? do you think we're well it looks it looks awesome right now i mean the rates are at, at a you know all-time low mm -hmm. you know the properties are you know have gone up in price i mean they're they're you know they're they've gone up they're worth they're back to a way up, you know above 2008 you know mm -hmm. prices you know yeah. um it looks good but but you know real estate is cyclical Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, we can't speculate on it, but it's cyclical. I mean, it's, 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 since I, I got in 98, it was, it was down. Yeah. You know, in 2008, it went all the way up. In 2008, it went down again. Yeah. And now it went up in 2018. We're already 2020. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know. So we can't predict it, but let's predict it. When, <laughs> when, when do you see the next downturn happening? I think, I think we're going to see some changes uh, after the elections, mm -hmm. all right, and the rates we should go back to what they should be, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I think the market's going to change. Yeah, I think the market's going to change. I don't think the low end market's going to, you know, hurt that much. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not going to. It's not going to hurt. But you number know, the higher end market, you know, I think it, it is hurting right now. I mean, yeah. right now it's it's not the high end market's not doing super good. Super slow. Anything super over a million dollars. Anything over three million, forget about it. Yeah. A million, you got a chance. You know, a million to, to two, three million, you got a chance. But yeah. over three million, you're sitting on the market for close to a year. Yeah. In most cases. So, yeah, I think that, you know, in, in my analysis, um, the there's a lot of factors that are kind of building up. You right. know, like in 2008, you know, we had the, the <clears throat> real estate bubble. Right. right? <clears throat> but right now... You know, there's $1.4 trillion worth of student loan debt. Right. There's like over $15 trillion of, uh, of, of uh, corporate uh, business debt. Right. There's, you know, we have an auto loan bubble. We have a credit card bubble. We have, you know, a lot of signs pointing towards um, more inflation than what we're currently, you know, always used to experiencing. Right. Uh, you have a lot of funny business going on at the Fed. Uh, you know, pumping funny money into the economy, artificially right. keeping rates low. So I could keep going on. That's like yeah. seven things right there. Right. So do you think that, and I agree that after the election is definitely more, you know, they're going to pump, gonna stabilize. They're gonna pump as much happen. funny money as they can until that election's over, you know, right. with the Fed and maybe afterwards too, because it's of course in everyone's benefit. But at some point, 
the cow's got to come home, you know, the chicken's got to come to roost or whatever analogies work for that. But do you think, my question is, do you think it's going to be a, a crash or more of like a low and slow type correction? Yeah, no, so I, don't, I don't think ever, I don't think it'll ever happen what happened in 2008. Ever, ever, or in our uh, unless, foreseeable future? Un, unless we, you know, unless we get those subprime loans that, the, the, you know, and people just, people that can't buy are buying, you know. Yeah. Because everybody's buying now, can buy, they qualify most of them, and if not, mm. you know, if, and, and if they're not, they're into, they, they get into programs where they have to give a large down payment, those people are not going to want to lose their money mm -hmm. or lose their property, so. Yeah. I don't think it'll happen like that again. Yeah. I mean, for a long time. I agree. I think it's going to be more of a low and slow burn, but I right. think when we do see <clears throat> the downturn, I think that it's not going to be like two, you know, 2006 was like a oh shit moment, right? And then like 2008 was the trough, right? right. And then 2009, 2011, it was still kind of troughy, but it was starting to correct back upwards a little bit. Right. By 2013, you know, like some places in the country, uh, average sale price is higher than it, even what it is right now. Right. You know, and, and so it was, you know, took a few years, but it was in the grand scheme of time kind of quick that right. things bounce back. What I think we're looking at, correct me if you or if you feel differently, is I think we're looking at a type of scenario that's going to last a lot longer. I think we're looking at at least close to five years once we reach... Once we reach a point where we've hit a trough, so right. to speak, I think we're looking at four to five years before we're back to the kind of market activity we're seeing now. What do you think about that statement? Um, repeat, repeat, make so, yourself, just give me more clear what you want. So I think it's going to just basically take a lot longer to, for the market to recover, to recover this time than it did last time. Uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be a stable, you know, uh, you know, it's going to, it's going to, you know, level out. It's mm -hmm. going to be stable, you mm -hmm. know, for a while. And I mean, it's all mindset, Jake, yeah. man. Really, I mean, it's, 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 it's mindset when people start getting worried. I mean, because the interest rates have gone up and now I'm going to wait and mm -hmm. or, or the interest rates are going up and I'm going to sell because God knows what's going to happen and mm -hmm. this and that. It's more of a mindset that fuels the, the, the the downturns and the upturns the psychological psychological side right, of right, it all 100 percent. Right. but what happened in 2008 is is a different yeah we can't even compare what we think might gonna happen or what's happened in the in the past yeah because what happened in 2008 yeah was just which is funny because people always like not always but a lot of people have a tendency like it's called recency bias right. you know where you think that oh, you know the, that's how it was last time so it's going to definitely be like that this time you right. know right. yeah which is you know not necessarily. There's no fact. There's no, right. you know, there's no. no evidence that it says it that it's going to be same, exactly the because, same. Because the logistics are not there yeah. as they were in 2008. The things that were happening in 2008 are not happening now. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, it's it's not going to happen like that. I mean, yeah. That to me. But. So where can anyone viewing this video find you? Social Mario media online. MarioCabrera.com. MarioCabrera.com. Or Real Deal Miami and Instagram. Real Deal Miami Instagram. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Any final words or things you want to impart on the listeners and viewers? Yes. When hiring a realtor, interview them, ask them. Ask them, you know, who they are, what they do, you know, what, what their experiences are, what their, 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 their knowledge is, you know, because they're going to help you make one of the biggest decisions and help you, you know, probably sell your highest, you know, uh, you know, your highest investment that you have, which is your home, you know, and it, it's very important that you pick someone that you're first comfortable with. Second of all, you know, they're going to do the right, the right thing. Okay. And they, they have knowledge because you're going to sign a six month contract with them and you're going to be married to them for six months. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Uh, you know, just like you know, just like if you're gonna go to um, to a doctor mm -hmm. to get a brain surgery or surgery, whatever it may be, you know, you're not gonna do, you're not gonna go see the one that does it for the cheapest. The discount brain surgery. Discount, or your, or your brother that just got his, uh, he just came yeah. out of school. Right. You know, so it, real estate is the same way. You know, there's mm. there's a lot of agents out here that know what they're doing. You know, that can help you. That can make you know your your experience very smooth, 
you know, very smooth and uh, a rewarding uh, transaction. Mm -hmm. And um, interview them. And, 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 and you know what? One of the great things is you could go on Zillow now. That, that's our resume. They mm -hmm. can just go on Zillow and see who we are, what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, there's no trick. To it, you know. Not to tout Zillow, but yeah. Huh? Yeah, you know, Zillow's good for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, man, it's been fun. Thank you so Great. much for coming. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure. And uh, always, everybody always. out there, if this is your Thank first you. video, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can keep getting this juicy content. And uh, yeah, the Jake Fletcher Show, first guest interview in the books, on the record. Hope you guys enjoyed. And we'll see you on the next one. Sell smart, buy bold. Take care. Peace. Peace.